do I want to delay to get the clinical experience and shadowing necessary to potentially get into a school in the States? Or should I just go to the Caribbean because I got in? The Old Pre-Meds Podcast, session number 310. Welcome to the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. My name is Dr. Ryan Gray, your host here every week, where I take your non-traditional pre-med questions and answer them here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast. You can ask your questions now in a new spot over at the Pre-Med Hangout, which is our Facebook group, using the hashtag OPM question. Again, that's premedhangout.com. Before we jump into today's question, I want to talk about the MCAT Minutes brought to you by Blueprint MCAT, specifically for non-traditional students. One of the hardest things is trying to figure out when to take the MCAT. And because you're not a traditional student, you don't work on traditional schedules. You have to think about when you're going to ideally start medical school. And if that's in August of 2025, that means you're applying July or June, rather, of 2024, which means you're taking the MCAT before that date, a whole year and a half before you plan on starting medical school. Two years before you start medical school, you should start thinking about prepping and planning and all that stuff. Use the free study planner tool over at blueprintmcat.com with a free account. You get access to that study planner tool to figure out what that schedule looks like moving forward so that your responsibilities as a parent, as a spouse, as an employee, whatever that may be, you can work in all of that stuff and make sure you're setting yourself up for success on the MCAT. Let's go and jump into today's question, a question about Caribbean medical schools. So our student today asks, I'm a 30-year-old applicant here. I got an acceptance for St. George's University, and I'm waiting to hear about interview offers from two DO schools in the States. I received my MCAT score back from retaking it this summer, and I actually did worse despite studying this time. So big fail. My question is, should I just throw it out and uproot to Grenada, having to drag along my dog and cat, or should I reapply next cycle? Obviously, retake the MCAT again and go to med school in the States. So pretty straightforward question here and a very common one for students, especially non-trads who are usually trying to speed things along because you're older in life. This student, uh, 30 years old, trying to speed up this whole process because it's it's long. It's a lot, right? Four years of med school, three plus years of residency. They're trying to shortcut potentially. That's how students usually think about this and go, do I, do I want to take time to do a post back to improve my grades? Do I want to delay a year to to fix my MCAT score? Do I want to delay to get the clinical experience and shadowing necessary to potentially get into a school in the States? Or should I just go to the Caribbean because I got in? Because most people get in. Uh, And it's, I mean, it's a little hyperbolic to say that, but a lot of people get in who probably shouldn't be getting into medical school. The biggest question is, What have you done to prove to yourself that you are academically capable of doing well in medical school, Caribbean or not? I think a lot of students think, ooh, the Caribbean medical schools are going to be easier because I got in, so I don't need to be the, the best student around. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. You have to be a super strong student, just as strong, if not stronger, then you would have been here in the States because you have more to prove because when you come back to match for your residency, you are, rightfully or wrongfully, uh, placed kind of at a lower tier to your US counterparts, both MD and DO. So you have to, you have to make sure that you are going to be academically capable of doing well in the Caribbean. You're going to have to be strict and and organized and and self-sufficient enough to to block out all the distractions of of classmates leaving being dismissed and getting kicked out whatever right attrition rate in caribbean schools is is notoriously higher than it is here in the states and that is a potential distraction now i should have prefaced this all with saying 
There are amazing physicians here in the States who went to Caribbean medical schools. The education that you potentially can get in the Caribbean medical schools is good enough to, to be a, an amazing physician here in the States, right? It's not lesser than, it's it's just as good. They're, they're teaching you to a test that you need to take here in the States, the, the USMLE step exams. So from an education standpoint, you are not lesser than. In the eyes of the residency programs, you are lesser than, unfortunately. And so you have to do more to prove yourself. So with that said, the question here for this student is, should I go to the Caribbean or should I retake the MCAT, delay, and and try to apply again next year? My answer is always the same. You shouldn't go to a Caribbean medical school unless you have to go to a Caribbean medical school, right? Have to and want to move your kind of process along faster are two different things. My recommendation is don't go to Caribbean medical school unless you have to. It just makes things harder coming back. And there are a lot of Caribbean medical schools. Google the big four, Caribbean medical schools, big four. Those are the four safest schools out there. There are Caribbean medical schools out there where you will go, you'll pay your money, you'll get your education, and then you'll come back to the States and find out that you can't get licensed here or you can't get licensed in certain states. So be careful. I would never go to a Caribbean medical school that waves the MCAT. Just plain and simple. I would never go to a Caribbean medical school that waves the MCAT. The MCAT is a big test to that, that makes sure that you are going to be okay studying and putting a lot of effort into one stupid test. Now, that's me saying I wouldn't go to a medical school that waves the MCAT is not me saying, oh, the MCAT is amazing, right? I hate the MCAT, but it is what it is. But there are schools out there that will say, oh, no worries, come, we'll, we'll take you, All right? And then you get to your board exams, step one, and you realize, oh, like I don't wanna study for an eight-hour test. That is just not who I am. And if you would have tried to study for the MCAT, you would have realized that much sooner. And now you're $120,000 in debt for two years of medical school. And what are you gonna do? You have to make sure that you go to one of the more prominent Caribbean medical schools if you do go to a Caribbean medical school. So for this student, lots of tangents here. For this student, I can't answer the question. I am not you. I don't have your life, your stresses, your your individual circumstances that will help you determine what the right answer is. If you've been trying and trying and trying to get into a US school year after year after year, go to the Caribbean. Work your butt off. Go to the Caribbean. Work your butt off. If you are just one cycle into the US, don't go to the Caribbean. Try again here in the States. Fix your MCAT score and come to the States or try to stay in the States so that your path on the other side is easier. It just is. It's easier. MDDO, it's easier than Caribbean. We don't know. We don't have enough data yet as we're recording this in August of 2022. We don't have enough data yet to, to see what Caribbean medical school ramifications are going to be with the match with step one going pass fail. Hypothetically, my, my assumption, my hypothesis is that there's not gonna be much different because students are just gonna move up their step two timeline and take step two and hopefully crush step two and that'll just replace step one scores. But we don't know. So there's, there's this potential wrinkle in, in all of this, this new variable with step one going pass fail. So moral of the story, lots of tangents in this episode, I apologize. I can't answer whether or not you should go to St. George's or try again here in the States. My recommendation broadly is don't go to a Caribbean school unless you have to go to a Caribbean school. Meaning you've tried to get into the States one time, you didn't get in, you ask questions, you figure it out. I lacked clinical experience. I got clinical experience. I had a bad, G, uh, bad GPA. I did a post back. I had a bad MCAT score. I fixed my MCAT score. 
you, you keep trying to figure it out. One cycle, two cycles, three cycles. If, if you're getting to the point where you're like, I, I can't do it anymore, go to the Caribbean. This is your dream, go to the Caribbean. But try, try again here in the States first. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, Caribbean medical schools can and do produce amazing physicians. So don't don't take this as a, a slight to Caribbean medical schools. Just understand that the hurdles on the other end are not worth it if you can prevent it. If you can't, I, I know plenty of students who just really struggle. They have amazing GPAs. They just can't do well on the MCAT for one reason or another. The MCAT's a horrible test that disadvantages a lot of people. And then they go to a Caribbean medical school and they score 99th percentile on their USMLE exams because the MCAT isn't the, the, the step exams. So, they, and they, they are valedictorian, number one in their class, whatever, in Caribbean schools. So don't, uh, don't take this as a slight to Caribbean medical schools. Go, succeed, stay, succeed. Do whatever is right for you ultimately at the end of the day. Don't forget to go check out blueprintmcat.com for an amazing study planner tool for free with your free account. Again, blueprintmcat.com. Have a great day. We'll see you next time here on the Old Pre-Meds Podcast.